Prognosis, a podcast with J.M. and Armon Ree. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Prognosis. I am JM, joined along with my good friend Armoon Ri. And today we've uh, been joined by another comrade for me on the other side of the pond, but um, closer to closer to Armoon, our uh, our friend Silas. Welcome, Silas. Hi there. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. You guys have um, had a had a longer connection than than you and I have, Silas. We've we've just recently spoke for the first time, but I've I followed along for uh, for months now with some of your material that that our moon shared, and um, for what it's worth to you, buddy, it's you guys have this unique ability to take in information and process it in a way where you seem to be able to retain it. Um, more intelligently or speak it more intelligently that's for sure um but in a way that you just continue to build upon what you're seeing and how you communicate it and for people like me who's 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 the kind of processor that will take things in and kind of let it go once i found what i what i needed to from it um and to become forgetful of the library that i've taken in through the years uh, you guys, you guys, uh, I don't know how you do it, but uh, again, for what it is, it is worth to you, it's, it seems to me like a, tr- a tremendous gift. And in, in my opinion, it only helps when trying to communicate such complicated thoughts and uh, through our contemplations, yeah? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very interesting looking at, well, for example, just conspiratorial topics you know, political conspiracies, uh, military conspiracies, they all really are are one conspiracy. Um, but you, you find that it's, it's almost, you, you turn into an autodidact, uh, you, you become multidisciplined and versed in many different uh, aspects of uh, fields of study. Just looking at sort of political conspiracies, economic, military conspiracies, um, it's yeah, it's it's very fascinating, and of course, now Armun, yourself, and uh, you, even I, recently have you know we we started looking into the metaphysics of everything, uh, the cosmogony, and tying that all into uh, really what is one grand tapestry, one grand story of uh, you could call it the conspiracy, or you could just call it merely the cycles of history. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I want to greet everyone as well. And uh, um, in terms of what Silas uh, is is addressing, um, it is it is really um, there's no one single topic that can't be actually connected to to another. Um, it all binds um, binds together um, in a very uh, even you could say a scary way. But um, it all, it's also got um, the positive side um, to it because um, it allows us to check reality, to see uh, where we stand and who we are in that piece of, of uh, space that we occupy here in this, uh, in this reality. So um, I think it all, it all really, um, it has to be uh, several disciplines. Uh, we have to, we can't be specialists anymore. Uh, that's, that's in the past, I think. That's a, a concept that is uh, no longer applicable, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, uh, so with the, the first episode, we had some very positive feedback. Um, uh, it was unexpected, um, and we've had um, some good uh, commenters um, on the first episode, um, especially on, on Odyssey, where the full um, the full episode was presented. I could only put a fragment on YouTube, but people were uh, linked to to the Odyssey uh, channel. And one of these uh, comments had several uh, suggestions, and uh, one of them um, I think would be a good starting point for our conversation with uh, 
with Silas today. Um, it was made by Shoes R O K, that is the username. And it stated as follows uh, Unique or shared souls. Must every human material body be connected to a unique energetic soul? Could the total number of human souls be finite? Could some humans be connected to a shared soul of some kind? If there are semi or totally soulless humans, then what is their purpose in this world? Silas, I would like you to uh, start off with uh, answering that. What is your opinion? I, I make a distinction between the soul and the spirit. So the, the way I would put it is the soul is that essence which is derived from the spirit. It's, it's sort of um, an outgrowth of it, mm -hmm. much like the self is. It is the essence of humanity's nature, the condition of humanity, um, the emotional expressions that we have, um, even the, the sort of dualistic expressions within the right and left, left hemisphere and how they contrast. That is the soul. Um, the spirit is something immaterial. It is mm -hmm. like a prima causa. It's, uh, it's something that connects us with God or that first principle, that pure potential. But I will say that, yes, I, I think this idea of soulless individuals, I, I do think going into the, this new digital uh, system, this internet <clears throat> of all things, especially if AI, people are be beginning to become more and more detached, not just from their spirit and from God, but from their souls themselves, that their soul has become almost assimilated into mm -hmm. this uh, digital hive mind. Um, and, and you're seeing that more prevalently now, especially after the event in 2020, post-dating that um, it's, it's very similar to this idea of the plastic man or the grey man, um, where essentially people become a tabula rasa in the mm -hmm. hands of the psychological uh, manipulators, and their soul can be forged, manifested um, by these said manipulators, and obviously placed within these biological vessels through, you know, media, of course, going into the digital um, system as it becomes more and more uh, pronounced, you will begin to see actually uh, sort of mental or um, uh, brain implants which will interface and create this tabula rasa, this, um, this, this synthetic human, this synthetic soul. Um, so yes, I do think a lot of people now are being set up to be soulless. Um, they lack emotion. They lack depth. I would say. Well, I could uh, I could say um, at least from my point of view that I mean in in a sort of um, analogy we could say that perhaps soul would be mind without amnesia. So uh, in the sense of the mind is um, is by nature amnesiac because it does not for example the presence of the subconscious um, is is a sort of amnesia where the repressed material goes into and so therefore um, it is not present in the conscious at all times and it only manifests in different ways so but the soul retains that memory the soul has that um, has that knowledge of, of <clears throat> the, the the full um, spectrum of of the mind um, and then the spirit, I agree with you there, that is um, from the timeless, um, outside the realm, uh, from the uh, essential um, existence, let's say. So it is a connection to essential existence. And therefore, soul would be always, like you well stated, uh, in my opinion, uh, connected to human existence. Now, in, in relation to uh, people without souls. Um, I am not uh, certain that it would be without souls, but perhaps without this connection that I was talking about, and that is uh, observable, without the connection to the timeless. Um, so uh, if there are soulless um, people, soulless humans um, in the world, 
um, they would be uh, akin to uh, the mythological golem, right? Um, the the uh, uh, being that is made entirely of physicality, let's say, um, and then animated uh, in a way that resembles life, but it isn't exactly life. So uh, all of us, to a certain extent, and all our minds, to a certain extent, uh, are artificial. They are constructs. And so we all are. Uh, in our minds, a, a bit of AI, but uh, a golem in that sense, in that mythological sense, would be entirely, its animation would be entirely AI without any connection uh, to an essence, to a spirit, to a timeless um, existence, uh, I would say. Uh, what is your opinion, Jay? Yeah, I agree. Um, in terms of the distinction between the soul and the essence, of course, um, we spoke about it last week, uh, within our, within our, um, thoughts of dogs. Right. And so mm -hmm. there are often times when you're at this, at a certain point in, in looking at this, where you're asking the question, how can, how can I understand this easier? So right now I understand that I'm talking with two wordsmiths that can explain this <laughs> in a complete, completely advanced ways that get us all thinking each time we hear it. And that's, that's, that's ultimately a huge value. But I also think we can look at this from a, a smaller scope in that um, when Silas, you were talking about the direction uh, of, of perhaps um, they're trying to, to take the human mind and the human experience and uh, how that correlates to um, the, the digital age, basically, right? Where the mind is the prize in this, in one side. And that's what they're going after in a way of trying to completely eliminate all connection to essence, so to speak. And the essence in this reality to me is the real gold. It's the, it's the real life. It's what creates life. It's the invisible creates the visible. And without that, this realm really doesn't exist in any material way that we have come to see it and know it. It's just a void. And so when the game is played through the mind and the human experience, and it becomes further entrapped within the character mind of who it is, what it is, what it thinks of reality and how it fits into it, uh, it becomes more engrossed in the experience, thus the divide or the void between that particular soul and the, uh, grows within, again, that human experience. And so if that is the prize, you know, on one level, it is the human mind. It is a takeover and control and through the programming and, and all the things we know about and, and in that way. But again, when we see it so many times, we, we talk about, you know, the term NPC gets thrown around. It's what you hear through these circles constantly. Um, when you come to those type of folks, you can see, to me, at least through my own observations, those who are more engrossed in the mental character with what's on the screen and everything playing out around them and their involvement within it, uh, the more I just see it as a deeper divide between their mind or the ego and their true self. And so the actual opposite happens, obviously, when you begin to listen and pay attention more to what we speak of in that that divide obviously shrinks, it shortens. And instead of the soul, or excuse me, instead of the ego leaning towards or having their attention pulled more aggressively in one direction, which is into the mental images of the reality that we think are real, we now begin to move closer to that immutable, timeless, infinite, source and as silas said um formless you know immaterial 